TJ Holmes is an award-winning journalist and ABC News anchor and correspondent who has covered news events around the world. During his accomplished career, he's worked for CNN and Good Morning America and reported in-depth on stories ranging from the presidential elections to the Summer Olympics in Athens and Rio de Janeiro. Mr. Holmes has been on the front lines of some of the nation's most critical breaking news stories, including the devastating Joplin, Missouri tornadoes, the catastrophic Deepwater Horizon oil spill in New Orleans, and the tragic shootings on the Virginia Tech campus. Abroad, he has covered terrorist attacks in Mumbai, India, Glasgow International Airport in Scotland, as well as Saddam Hussein's execution in 2006. Reflective of Walden's mission of social change, Mr. Holmes has dedicated his career to making a difference through journalism. In addition to belonging to the National Association of Black Journalists, he is also a member of 100 Black Men of America, an organization that focuses on improving the quality of life within black communities and enhancing educational and economic opportunities for all African Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming today's keynote speaker, Mr. T.J. Holmes. So, uh, 100 Black Men of America, National Association of Black Journalists. I'm black, y'all, if you didn't catch that. Um, look, I have given commencement speeches before. I have gone to countless places around this country uh, talking to groups of college students on campuses all over this country. However, when I got the invitation to come speak at Walden, it became apparent pretty quickly that I wasn't going to be able to dust off one of my old speeches. It became pretty clear that I was not going to be able to give the same advice to those students that I gave to you all, because those students were all what? 18, 19, 20, 21? And in the case of the commencement speeches, those were 21, 22-year-old graduates. And when you're talking to a 21 or 22-year-old college graduate, you can tell them anything, <laughs> and they'll buy it. You can tell them anything. And I'm not insulting their intelligence. I just knew when I was standing before them, I was the older and the wiser of the group. I knew that I had lived more, done more, experienced more, had more life experience, professional experience. So I could tell them anything, and it was profound. I could tell them anything. I had them eating out of the palm of my hand, y'all. That material is not going to work on you all, because those are 21 and 22-year-old kids. And the average age of a Walden University student is 40. Half of you graduates are older than I am. Most of y'all can go give your own damn commencement speeches. And I'm not talking about going home and writing it. I can take you right now, take you over, and talk to a group of 21, 22-year-old graduates, tell them your life story, and they will get up and applaud with inspiration. Wow. Because you all have been through it already. Y'all have been through it. So. None of the old material is going to work, so you all are getting a brand spanking new speech today. I had to start from scratch. Um, I do want to thank um, President Omer for the invitation and Walden for inviting me. I talked to him a few weeks ago on the phone, and we were going through this, and he was telling me about his, his student population. Um, and that's where I knew I had to mix it up. And you all, congratulations. I know there are thousands and thousands who are watching online as well that can't be here really all over the country, all over the world. So to those folks out there, in both the Mingi Bay and Pangi, African, uh, bonsoir, buenas noches, and obrigado for being here. So thank you all. Sorry you can't be here, but congratulations to you all as well. Now, I'm not going to make a mistake that I've seen a lot of people making commencement addresses. They try too hard to be profound. They are trying to give you a nugget. They are trying to give you a sound bite. They're trying to give you something that's going to stay with you the rest of your life. But the truth is, I am hardly ever inspired by people's words. Y'all not probably going to be inspired by my words today either. Um, I don't mean that, that they're getting worried, like, who brought this guy in? No, what I'm saying is... <laughs> I'm not trying to inspire you with words, and I'm not inspired by people's words. I'm inspired by their stories. You all are looking at me here. You don't want to see me. You don't want to hear me. 
What you need is to see yourselves and hear yourselves in the person that's standing before you right now. And oftentimes, I'm brought in to speak because people want to hear your success story. People, you all are going places, so they want to put people in front of you who have been places, who are success, who are successful. So let me tell you my success story. I graduated from high school, top 10% of my class, got a full ride academic scholarship to the University of Arkansas where I graduated in four years with a degree in broadcast journalism and immediately started my broadcast career. And by the age of 25, I had made it to a top five television market and had a job that was paying me $250,000 a year. By the age of 28, I had signed a contract with CNN to be a national news anchor. I parlayed that success, built my national profile to the point that I was able to get my own late night show in 2012. I continued to build my national profile and then moved on back into my news roots. And now for the past five years, I have been at ABC as a news anchor and correspondent and reporting primarily as a contributor to Good Morning America, the number one network morning show in the country. And I count amongst my friends, People like Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, Michael Strahan. I have been all over the world to report. I have contributed to breaking news coverage that has won some of the highest awards in journalism. Not only that, I have walked numerous red carpets. I have been to the White House for social and for business purposes. I have hung out with the likes of Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, Brad Pitt. Hell, Kerry Washington was photographing her arm around me. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was in LA cooking in the kitchen with Gordon Ramsay at his home. And true story, just a couple days ago, I was in upstate New York, sitting around a campfire, chatting it up with Mariah Carey. That's a true story. And now on top of all that, I am married to one of the baddest black female attorneys in this country, who is now the vice president of one of the largest modeling agencies in the world. We have an adorable six-year-old daughter. You see the three of us, we are the most precious light-skinned family you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and all of this from a boy whose granddad only finished the third grade. All this from a guy, from a boy who is from West Memphis, Arkansas. I attribute all of my success to two phone calls, two phone calls I made my freshman year in college, two phone calls. I partied hard at the University of Arkansas. And that first semester, my fall semester, I took 18 hours. I dropped down to 12. I dropped two classes. Why? Because it was better to take an incomplete on the transcript than an F, because I was going to fail both of those classes. Dropped down to 12 hours, that's four classes. My grades at the end of that first semester, two C's and two D's. I feel bad enough, so that's why you come on, go. I'm pouring my heart out here. Um, so you all know, you get a scholarship, you got to keep your GPA up, or you're going to lose the scholarship. So now I freak out. So I load up the next semester. I take 21 hours, 21. My grades that next semester, five A's, a B and a C. Clearly, I could do the coursework. But that brings me to phone call number one. I had to call my parents and tell them that their son, their honor student, had just Finished his first year with a 2.9 GPA. I needed a 3.0 to keep the scholarship, and the money was gone. Now, I told y'all I was partying. I wasn't partying alone. I was chasing every, every ladies night they had at a club. Ladies get in free. I was paying my way to go, getting in there. That brings you to phone call number two. I had to call my mother and tell her she was going to be a grandmother. Yeah, that's my success story. Oh, I, I left some details out. Yes, when I told you I got that scholarship, I, I left out the part that I lost it after my first year because I was cutting up. And when I told you I had gotten to CNN by the age of 28, what I didn't tell you is that my first job out of college, after missing out on opportunities, found out that my news director actually was telling people in the station that he wouldn't put a black man on the anchor desk in that market. I forgot to tell you along the way of my success is that a couple years later at another station, the top five market, they were actually sued by the white guy who lost his job, the guy that I replaced. And he was claiming discrimination. And I had to go sit as a part of a lawsuit across from an attorney who was questioning my worth and telling me I only got my job because I was black and I was some quota. And oh, I didn't tell you along that path of my success story, that late night show I had, it only lasted one season because it didn't get renewed, it was canceled. 
And, oh, I didn't tell you that, I, yeah, I've been at ABC for five years, but I barely made it one because my doctor told me I need to quit because I went to him and he had me checking my blood pressure twice a day. He found a heart murmur and he diagnosed me as moderately severe depressed. Oh, and I didn't tell you that, oh, that bad attorney I have now, my wife, I didn't tell you that that's my second marriage because my first one failed so miserably. And I didn't tell you that that little six-year-old daughter I have that's gorgeous, well, that's my second daughter. My first was born when I was barely out of my freshman year of college. Now, some of that I've never said publicly before. Some of that I have told on occasion here or there. But the reason I'm telling you here now is because I refuse to stand up here as some finished product or some success story to which you are supposed to aspire. Look, y'all, I went through hell to get here to you today. Many of y'all went through your own personal hells. But you don't remember when you see Oprah Winfrey, you don't think, oh yeah, she got fired from her job in Baltimore that time. You don't think when you see a Ford Mustang going down the road, oh yeah, Henry Ford, he almost just blew it in the industry on his first two jobs he had in the auto industry. And when you watch Jaws, you don't think, oh, you know what, Steven Spielberg, he didn't even get into the USC Cinematic Arts Institute. You don't think that stuff. Failure is just a moment. Failure is not a person. And you're gonna have plenty of those moments in your life. Now, you are, I hope, I hope, I hope, you all have more success moments than you have failure moments. But don't get caught up in your successful moments either. You right? What, what, what's, how does the, son, the, the saying go? Uh, uh, money is what people without talent use to keep score. You all know plenty of people out there who think because they got that job over you or they got this position over you or they that got that car, that that makes them a successful person. It does not. I am not a success because I had Good Morning America or CNN next to my name. Hell, I am more proud to tell you about how I struggled to pay for the last three years of my college after I lost my scholarship than I am to tell you I got the scholarship in the first place. Look, none of my failures were planned, and I'm sure nobody in this room, give me a show of hands, y'all exactly where you plan to be at this stage of your life. This is how you plan. This is exactly where you plan to be. Right? Nobody's that way. You get to a point where people are going to tell you about dreams. Right? They ask you when you're 12, when you're 15, when you're 18, what are your dreams? And then later in life, they stop asking you about your dreams. You know what they ask you about? Where you want to be in five years? Where you want to be? Where do you see yourself? So don't stop dreaming. You, you want to find the richest place on the planet? Go to a graveyard. Go to a cemetery because that's where all the ideas and aspirations and dreams are buried along with all those folks who didn't do anything and you all are doing it. Don't stop dreaming, it. but still stop asking where you want to be in five years. It's okay not to have that answer. I didn't know you asked me anywhere the past five years. I don't, I, I'm not where I planned to be, where I expected to be, where I wanted to be, but I am happy where I am because all of that I went through, you know where it got me? On this stage in front of y'all today. So please, don't, don't get caught up, um, and again, I'm. I'm I had a whole lot more, but, they, but we keep keeping it short. Um, but I don't want y'all to get caught up in getting there. Where? There. Where? There. Everybody thinks it's all right when I get this, when I got that, all I got to do is get this house, get that car, get that job, get that promotion, move to that neighborhood, get to that school, and everything's going to be cool. And some of y'all think now, now that I got this degree, everything's cool. No, don't get caught up in getting there. Where? There. I don't know. Everybody's trying to get somewhere. Don't get caught up in where you want to be. Ask yourself who you want to be. Who do you want to be? What kind of parent, what kind of spouse, what kind of citizen, what kind of sister, what kind of brother, what kind of coworker? Now, I told you all, I went back and looked at some of the old speeches. I couldn't find anything I said to a 21 and 22 year old that applied to y'all today. I tried, but none of the lines overlapped. But there was one thing at least I'm gonna borrow. And this was in 2014 to the graduating class at Clark Atlanta University. I said to them, quote, if it's easy, if you didn't fail badly before you achieved your dream, then your dream wasn't big enough in the first place. And I told them, quote, I congratulate you on the awesomeness of the mistakes you're about to make. I congratulate you on the awesomeness of the failures you're about to now have. I congratulate you on the awesomeness of the obstacles you're about to overcome. But for you guys, I congratulate you on surviving the awesome mistakes you already made. I congratulate you on surviving the obstacles you've already overcome.
Congratulations. You were a success before you ever walked in here, before you ever put on that cap and gown. You all were already success stories. This is just adding a little, a little, a little icing on the, on the cake there. Last thing here, guys, I have no clue who my commencement speaker was. And it's not because it was so long ago. I have no idea. I think it was a woman. I think it was a white woman. But I have no idea what she did, who she was, and why she was qualified to talk to me on my big day. So as my narcissism would dictate, I'm worried that you all, in a year, two years, five years, somebody's going to ask you about your big day, and you can't even come up with the letters T and J. <laughs> so I don't want you to remember T.J. Holmes, necessarily. I don't want you to remember the guy who spoke at your graduation who was such a success story. I want you to remember that the guy who spoke to you at your commencement on your big day was a colossal screw-up. I want you to remember that that guy screwed up so badly that he became successful enough to get the invitation to speak to you on your big day. I congratulate you all on where you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. Congratulations, and thank you for the honor of addressing you today.